First of all, I want to say to all of you, Happy Mother's Day. I also want to say a little prayer for those of you who have lost your mothers, those of you who have lost children, those who grieve being unable to be mothers, and those uh, who, it happens, have difficult mother-child relationships. We lift all of you up and give gratitude for the mothering figures in our lives. Shepherds, in a way, are mothering figures, aren't they? Sort of herding cats all day long, right? Sheep are a little well, more well-behaved than uh, children or cats. Um, and so for all of you who do some cat herding in your, in your life, um, blessings on your life have been there. We have several shepherds and sheep in our stories this morning. We begin with the story of Tabitha. I think of her as a shepherd. It says that when she died, uh, there were many widows around her who she had shepherded by providing them clothing, by taking care of them, and they all grieved heavily when she died. She had almost made them family by gathering them in like a shepherd. It says she was devoted to good works and charity. Something about her commitment to follow Jesus made her, as a follower of the Good Shepherd, become a shepherd herself. Can you think of all the places in the world that you, um, in your own life, might be called to be a shepherding presence? A gathering in, a keeping safe, a laying down in front of danger kind of shepherd? All of us are called to follow in the footsteps of that Good Shepherd, Jesus. And one of the ways in which we do that is by hearing his voice. It's true that when shepherders, um, shepherds or shepherdesses actually in the world, there's just as many shepherdesses as there are shepherds, they can all gather together, several shepherds, on a slope, and the sheep don't get confused. They know who their shepherd is by listening to the voice of that shepherd. That's what Jesus says this morning, my sheep know my voice. And so I ask a question this morning, how do we hear the Good Shepherd's voice? Do you hear it literally? How do you hear the Shepherd's voice? Sometimes it's a matter of how much we are paying attention, right? Because we can hear the Shepherd's voice in a song, in a moment, in a conversation with someone else, in a moment out in nature. It's all about what we're paying attention to. And so I want to share with you a story I could have shared with the kids as well. Um, it is by, and I hope I say this, this name correctly, Sasanandana Swami, uh, a story about two friends in New York City. And this is a story. It's not necessarily a true story, but it still has truth in it. So the story goes, there was a Native American person from an unnamed tribe and his friend who were walking through Times Square in Midtown New York during lunch hour. So for a minute, can you imagine how busy and loud the sounds are in Times Square at that time? There's honking, there's cab drivers, there's people hollering to one another. There's all kinds of noise. The streets are filled with people, cars honking, horns, taxi cabs squealing around corners, sirens, and the sounds of the city that were almost deafening. Suddenly, the Native American friend says, I hear a cricket. And his friend says, what? That can't be. It's too loud. And his friends listened carefully for a moment, then walked across the street to a big cement planter filled with shrubs, looked under the branches, and sure enough, found a small cricket. His friend was utterly amazed. That's incredible, his friend said. I could never hear a cricket in all that racket and noise. Yes, that's true, came the reply. It depends on what is really important to you. Here, let me show you. And so he reached into his pocket, pulled out a few coins, and dropped them on the sidewalk. And then, with the noise of the crowded street still blaring in their ears, they noticed every head, within 20 feet, turn around to look to see if the money had come out of their pockets. See what I mean, said his friend? It all depends on what's important to you. 
But this story illustrates to me as a follower of Jesus, which the person who told this story may or may not have been, what this illustrates to me is that we hear God's voice when we're paying attention and when we want to hear God's voice. And it comes to us in many different ways. All of us Lutherans and Episcopalians are sacramental people. What that means is that we believe that there are outward and visible signs of inward and spiritual grace from God around us all the time, not just in our two great sacraments of baptism and Eucharist, although especially in those, but really in any moment where there are outward and visible signs of God's grace. Can you think of the many things that are outward and visible signs of God's grace? A hug, a smile, a casserole given to someone who is stuck at home and recovering from an illness or a surgery? So many. Even walking outside and hearing the birds chirp or seeing something beautiful like a waterfall, a recognition of God's creation outside can be a sacrament. And it's in those moments, even if it's not out loud, that we can hear God's voice. The late Rachel Held Evans, how many of you know who she is? Wow, she's pretty good. She, she, uh, she was a very wise woman, and so I encourage you to read some of the things that she wrote. She died too young. She wrote that the purpose of the sacraments and of the church is to help us see to the point of bread and wine, but also to the orchids, the food pantries, the post-funeral potlucks, and the post-communion, she says dance parties. I haven't ever done that before. Maybe we should try it. <laughs> and say, pay attention. This stuff matters. These things are holy. Our God is in the business of transforming ordinary things into holy things all the time scraps of food into feasts and empty purification vessels into fountains, fountains of fine wine. This God knows his way around the world, so there's no need to fear. There's always enough. We're just invited to taste and see. There's always and ever enough. Our story of abundance in this sacramental listening and learning is a beautiful one. For a moment, before I close today, I want to go back to that story of sheep and wolves. And we have to acknowledge, don't we, that there are still wolves and things that are dangerous in the world. Today is the feast day of Julian of Norwich, and she's the one who has said, all will be well and all manner of things will be well. You may know that quote from her. But she also spoke to the experience of being a believer. She said, if there is anywhere on earth, a lover of God is always kept safe. If there is anywhere on earth, a lover of God is always kept safe. I know nothing of it. She's telling the truth. Being a believer doesn't mean that we're kept safe. Being a believer means that we do walk through hard, hard times and hard pastures, even as God is setting a table for us in the midst of the hardship. So she said, you know, I know nothing of it if there are Christians who are always kept safe. It's not shown to me. But this was shown to me. That in falling and rising again, we are always kept in the same precious love. The precious love of our Good Shepherd, who is always inviting us to listen to that loving and comforting and life-transforming voice. And so we pray, Holy Jesus, Holy Spirit, help us to listen to your voice. Help us to know your love and to experience you in every moment in this world that is full of sheep and wolves and good shepherds. And help us also to follow your example, to walk in your footsteps, and to be good shepherds ourselves. Amen.